On February 21st, 2024, your boy released this particular video on YouTube. White South African farmers send this warning to black South Africans. And it had a lot to do with this particular tweet. And that particular tweet is pretty much what you're seeing with white boers pretty much at a gun range, threatening to defend themselves, saying that, hey, we're not going to be Zimbabwe. It's not going to end that way if you black South Africans start trying to attack us. So that led me to doing some research to see are white south african farmers being attacked by black south africans because i got this tweet so i decided to look into the tweet to see if there was some truth to it so i went online i was typing i was looking for information and then it brought me to a video created by the issue with dan quarter shout out to his channel the name of the video that he created was called the truth about farm murder white genocide claims in south South Africa. And of course, one of the clips that he made that was pretty good in the video was this one. Saps's definition of a farm murder is not just what we understand as the farmer versus the farm worker. Saps's number 32,000 from 2007 describes farmers, farm owners, rather than farm workers, laborers like the employees. So if we were to take the nearly 100,000 people who work on farms, whether as laborers or as owners, whether as employees, or employers, nearly a million people, and take the around 70 deaths from 2017, then it's only nine deaths out of every 100,000 farmers on average, way below the national average of 34 out of every 100,000, and nowhere near Afroforum's headline, which was 156 out of 100,000. And even if we set aside that claim from 2017 from Afroforum with the three big problems I've described, all of the claims from Afriforum and all the other people and organizations like them have two really big problems. The first one is that when SAPs and these uh, agricultural unions put out their numbers of farm murders per year, they are including all employees and employers, laborers and owner managers, which means that the 50, for example, 50 farm murders recorded in 2022, not all of them were farmers. In fact, less than half of them were farmers, more than 20% of them were employees and laborers. And so if Afroform and others are trying to make an argument that farm owners Owners, farm managers and by implication the white ones are being attacked they've got even fewer farm murders to work with than the full totals that saps is putting out so i published a video and the video started trending it did pretty good as you can see it got about seventy one thousand views i go into my analytics and i see i have a lot of people commenting from south africa but man it's not the kind of comments that you think right so i noticed a lot of white south africa Africans had some heat for your boy and it was kind of interesting so I want to go over some of these comments and let you know what they thought about what I was saying so guys I'm gonna get into the comments and I will be honest that uh, most of these comments were respectful I didn't really see any ones that were kind of out of pocket most of these just came from which I consider are white South Africans just putting out their positions so let's start with this one here's my lived experience my friend's mother a 74 year old woman was gang a grape stabbed seven 17 times and left for dead on their family farm. Miraculously, she survived. I was there after the fact, cleaning the house. Who would think one person could bleed that much? Nothing of value was taken. Now the farm is lying fallow. Hundreds of jobs lost. Squatters have now taken over. 10 years later, the local community is begging her to come back. Good luck with that. Again, let me, you know, like I said, I don't agree with that. I'm very sorry that that happened to any human being, right? So I don't want to encourage that. Since the mission of the request, 16 farm murders have been registered between May in July 2023, representing a 56% increase. Again, on the video that uh, Dan did, I did not see that. Let's look at this other one. In COVID time, the farmers donate and keep the communities alive with their food donations. Otherwise, the nation would operate in famine, but the farmers step up to keep the nation fed and strong. Bless the farmers on the lands. Thank you. I don't think that anybody is disagreeing with the fact that boar skin farms or black skin farms or, you know, whatever they're doing is not a good job. That's not the position. I think the position 
question that many black South Africans have is, should those people be there? And if it was the other way around, okay, if blacks had gotten their land somewhere in Europe where they're from ancestrally, would they allow blacks to be there? The answer is no. So that's the position I think that black South Africans are dealing with. Does it matter that, okay, yes, you've done this and it's a great thing. Should you be there? I think that's what the black South Africans are, are dealing with that position, okay? Hey, yo, you have to do some more research before you make a video. You should start with Jan Van Rebeek, then the 1820 settlers in the Boer Wars one and two, then apartheid. On apartheid, you have to look at living conditions and what they were for all, and you may as well compare that to the modern day squatter camps. Then I see you use Julius Malema as a thumbnail, but didn't really speak about Malema who publicly called for land grabs. Our politicians singing kill the Boer and all of this. That is not running properly. Infrastructure damage, clinics looted and burned down. Electricity problems, corruption, hijackings, and rampant gun crime, while as a normal citizen, it's almost impossible to get a gun license. Then farm murders. Now my dear now South African friend, it might just be another crime in the long, but ask yourself what percentage of South Africans are farmers? Look, I don't know all that history and you bring up some very valiant points, but you mentioned apartheid, right? Which is, why was there apartheid? We're talking about a group of people that were treating another group of people bad. And now those people want you off the land and they want to have a land grab. If there was ever any black person doing it in Europe, this wouldn't be up for debate. So what do you expect they should do? If you have a history with another group dominating you and you have the opportunity to get some level of revenge or retribution, what would you do? You would want them off the land grab, right? Like it makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, not saying that everybody's bad or everybody's good, but yeah, that's what they would feel like. Okay, now let's look at this one right here. A few things, even if there were 10 white farm grapes, tortures and barbaric murders every year since 2007, it's not acceptable, period. I agree, it isn't true. There are no brutal farm masters at all, even annually in the UK or United States. My twin brother, a South African police colonel died in 2018 mysteriously, then a successor, Lieutenant Colonel Brewer was gunned down on his way to work. They worked on the same police dogiers investigating syndicates. How many syndicates or have also been involved in foreign massacres? Can you answer that question? I cannot. Can you actually get on a flight and go to South Africa and stay on a comfy farm where the farmers around have been brutally murdered instead of slamming us on a conspiracy alluding to the fact that we probably deserve it? Get out of your comfortable chair, fly to South Africa, stay on a farm for a few weeks, then pick up this topic again. Nobody's saying that you deserve anything, but the reason why I'm not gonna go stay on a farm in South Africa because it's not my land and it's not my position to be there. And yeah, so if it's not my position to be there, I'm not gonna be there, okay? Not saying you deserve anything, but I won't be there. That's for sure, okay? You researched and couldn't find people talking about taking land. The governing party has it as part of their manifesto. It gets pulled out and dusted off every time something goes horribly wrong with governmental planning. They try to change the wording a lot. The current iteration only states properly can be utilized by the state of not used effectively. Very CCP of them. Well, when your party, I'm assuming the Boer party was in charge, what were the laws? And how did it benefit the blacks? I mean, it's only been 30 years, guys. Have you guys not forgotten like what the big issue is here? Do we have amnesia? Like black South Africans to feel any way towards Boers? Don't you think they have some right to feel however they feel, even the ANC? You guys are not being serious. You know, I'm not talking about retribution or murders or any of that. Like, should they feel how they feel towards you guys based on historical facts should they not what torture and damage did the Boer administration do in the clerk and all those people what did they do to black south africans like are you not serious at, at any point because you wouldn't have that sympathy towards them that's for sure talk about an oppressive regime when it was your guys turn to run things and you guys didn't have very much mercy at all so now you're on the other side of the you know kind of the door here you're calling somebody the chinese communist party i mean you guys are just not serious today are you like it's actually kind of sad, but it's okay. So let me just say this. I don't really know a lot of white South Africans if I know one at all. I've met one when I was living in Europe, but you know, I understand what you guys are are trying to say, but here's the situation. You guys are living on somebody's ancestral land. It is not your ancestral land. You are not original to that particular part of the world. Like that's the whole issue here. You guys completely forget the issue. If it was flipped, on the other side, where I believe most of you guys are from some parts of Europe, and if black South Africans were there for 250 years and then took your land and dominated you, well, what would you say? You would say, get them out, right? They took their land from our ancestors. 
that would be your argument. No white person could ever say, no, it's their land now. You wouldn't accept that, right? So all they're saying is, well, you shouldn't even be there. That is the black South Africans argument. So I get what you're trying to say, but it has no real merit at cause at all. Because in reality, you should not be there. You're not original to that particular land. Your original land is somewhere in Europe. No, we cannot get around that fact. So you can have all the heat you want from me and be upset about it. We can never get around that. So the reality is all the issues that you have will quickly be solved if they were to get their ancestral land back. Then there would not be a problem with this in the first place. I am not insinuating that violence is right or attacking anybody is right. All violence is wrong. Mr. Dan Corder said the same thing, but I agree with them. Like, hey, shouldn't you guys have left by now? That's the position because if it was the other way around, surely you would do the same. Not to mention what y'all did to them in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, right? I'm just saying. So you can get mad if you want. It doesn't stop what I'm saying from being the truth, okay? It's not even about color or race or gender. Anybody who comes and takes somebody's land, you make them second-class citizens on the land, they want you out and you're upset because they want you out because you don't want to give up what you took from them. That's really what the argument is about. And you should be out technically because if it was the other way around, you would want them out. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again on Kanganda. We're out.